Cartesian coordinates or orthonormal system is the most preferred system and we should understand how to transform from one orthonormal system to another orthonormal system. So, uh, in my uh, previous uh, sections, I have talked about uh, different types of uh, transformation. I have talked about uh, a class of transformation that is creating, creating a nested group of transformation. The necessity for creating this, this, this wasn't there part of the, in the book, but this is uh, taken from the MIT courseware. This sort of tells us how, how the uh, different transformations are connected with each other and as we move up, up in the nest that uh, we see that uh, slowly and slowly the, uh, the invariants uh, keep decreasing and finally when, uh, when I have the, the projection transformation or perspective transformation even parallel lines don't remain parallel. Right. So this is how we have done it. We have, we have also seen um, how to make, uh, how to linearize uh, translation by adding an additional dimension to, to the problem. We have, uh, <clears throat> by adding one extra dimension, we, we make it into an affine transformation. Then we used a normalized uh, omega, which makes it an homogeneous transformation. We have then seen that we have we know how to rotate, do rotational transformation around x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. But how do we do a rotation around an arbitrary axis k? This was in my last last video. So what we do is that we do a series of uh, coordinate transformation. We sort of transform the basis vector so that one of the basis vector aligns with the vector k and moment that basis vector aligns with uh, with the vector k we can then do a rotation around that particular vector and then we can do again the series of uh, uh, rotational transformation and bring it back to the original uh, frame of reference which was there so we the rotation matrix would be basically a sandwich bit of of um, inverse uh, positive rotation and inverse rota rotation on either side to to take it to to the uh, relevant frame of reference where i can do a rotation around a specific axis it could be an x axis y axis or z axis i've shown shown it as a rotation around the y axis but one could do uh, take different angles and do the similar thing for other other uh, rotation angles as well. Now we come to to or uh, change of orthonormal basis. Effectively, what I have done there also was a change of orthonormal basis. I have two two uh, frames of references, two orthonormal frames of references, where I have uh, one of the uh, reference frame was. Uh, the k vector was one of the axis of the reference frame. So we move from one orthonormal reference frame to another orth orthonormal reference frame. Please note in both the cases the origin of the two frames remain the same. The same thing we will see it in a more systematic way, way how to solve it. There it was like a, like a method or a picturesque way that we try to solve it. But in general any change of orthonormal basis from one orthonormal basis to another orthonormal basis where the origins are coinciding. Now please note if the origins do not coincide you could always translate the two, two frames of reference to the same origin, apply this technique and then again translate it back into an inverse translation and take it back to, to the um, previous uh, frame of reference. So here we have, we are in the final uh, outline that is change of orthonormal basis. So <clears throat> if I have uh, two vectors A and B, I can easily see that the contribution of B on A would be to take a projection of B on, on the vector A which is 
basically b cos cos theta if theta is the angle sustained between the vector a and b that is one way of looking at it we could also see it as b dot a vector b scalar product a would also give me a similar result of uh, the contribution or the 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 effect of b on a so so here i have given uh, a, a coordinate frame so um, uh, where i have one coordinate frame which is x y z and i would like to move to another coordinate frame orthonormal coordinate frame uh, u v n so i have a point p which is given uh, by uh, three values x y z that is the coordinate of of point p, um, p in the x y z z um, coordinate system similarly u v n would be the the coordinate in the u v n in the orthonormal basis what i mean by orthonormal is that uh, if i take a dot product between the the scalar quantities that is between the the basis vectors x y and z the dot product will be zero except for dot product with with itself x dot x is equal to 1 x dot y is equal to 0 x dot z is equal to 0 similar for the uvn coordinate system and please note that x dot x is equal to 1 because it is normalized so therefore it is an orthonormal basis vector so here you see in uh, in two dimension it is much easier to see so i have got the x y coordinates and the um, u v coordinates you see the point p described in in the two coordinates and and their uh, its uh, coordinate positions are also given so what we need to find is that from uh, knowing p x y z we need to find p u v n so <coughs> let us do some something let us find out the vector the basis vector x y and z in function of basis vector u v and n now vector x can be found out the contribution of x can be found out on vector u v and n and this contribution can be easily found out by by doing a dot product so here i have got x dot u times the vector orthonormal vector uh, u plus x dot v times the orthonormal vector v plus x dot n times the orthonormal vector n similarly i have i have the vector y can be written in the similar manner y dot u y dot v and y dot n so contribution of uh, y in in the direction u in the direction v and in the direction n similarly the contribution of z in the direction u is um, z dot u the contribution of z in the direction v is z dot v and the contribution of z in the n direction is z dot n so i have these three coordinate system sorry <coughs> so i can write the basis vector x y z in function of the basis vector u v n in this manner so if i if i have this relation i've just uh, put the equation seen in the previous slide up here and um, substituting uh, the equation for p so we have got p is basically x comma y comma z which is the vector p can be written as x x cap plus y y cap plus z z cap this can be written as the scalar quantity x times this is the the con x vector seen from up this is the y vector here and this is the z vector now let me go further let me put this uh, equation shown below on top and we can rewrite this equation we can factorize as you see here all the terms in u can be factorized together all the terms in v can be factorized together and all the terms in in n can be factorized together 
so i have this first line where where i have got the scalar scalar x times x dot u plus y times y dot u plus z times z dot u this whole thing is uh, multiplied to to a uh, to a u cap similarly the second line is multiplied to v cap and then i have the third line which multiplies to n cap now pushing this equation on top i can express i know that p is equal to u v n and uh, which can be written as u u cap plus v v cap plus n n cap so comparing these two equations we can easily say that u is equal to x x dot u y y dot u z z dot u and similarly for v and n so what we have done is that we have we started with x y z and we we determined u v n in this manner now these equations can can be simplified or written in a simpler manner in a matrix format so here i have got the matrix where i have got my vector u v n is equal to the matrix which is uh, u subscript x u subscript y u subscript z v subscript x v subscript y v subscript z n subscript x n subscript y n subscript z and vector x y z and uh, u subscript x is equal to x dot u and um, u subscript y is equal to y dot u please note that scalar vec scalar uh, product i could write this as x dot u or u dot x it's sim similar because a scalar product is commutative it does not change if i use x dot u or u dot x so i have got uh, these two vectors here and uh, it can be written as a matrix m and uh, what is uh, m inverse what is m inverse is that moving from uh, uvn back to xyz it is a similar thing but it is m inverse is transpose of m so i have got uh, here uh, x subscript u x subscript v x subscript n x subscript u is nothing else but x dot u and um, x subscript v is x dot v and x subscript n is x dot n so it it is effectively the the transpose of of the matrix m which is shown up here and so m inverse is m transpose similar thing we saw for uh, rotation transformation also that uh, inverse of rotation is also a transpose matrix so now <clears throat> up to now what we we were discussing is that both x y z and u v n have the same origin the origins are not different now if both the origins are different for instance i i am in the world coordinate which is a cartesian coordinate and i move to the i coordinate or the camera coordinate i know the position of the camera which could be written as tx ty and tz and uh, knowing this position of the camera i could then apply bring the transformation bring the both these coordinates together at at the same origin do this rotation and take it back to the original coordinate system assuming that both the coordinates are are at the same same location so then i could write this equation in this manner if i have got in in an affine transformation so i will have here ux uy uz and please note here tu that is in basis 
in the UVN basis the translation of my original coordinate system x, y, z. So if you see here that is I need to know in my camera coordinate system how, how the how much is the camera translated from, from the origin of the world coordinate system. So that would come in the uh, quantity Tu, Tv and Tn in this quantity and this can easily be written and the inverse coordinate system. So here I have got this uh, vector and uh, I could say that this is my object frame and then uh, which may be a Cartesian coordinate I move into a world frame I, I will get this thing and obviously the translation is there between uh, where I am placing these objects this translation will be this Tu, Tv and Tn placing similarly from uh, the world frame I could move into the camera frame Now supposing if I have a rotation around an arbitrary axis k, let us draw the axis, let, we have the three dimensional coordinates x, y and z and if I draw an arbitrary vector k and let us see if I would like to rotate a point p around this vector k that is the rotation plane is perpendicular to the vector k. So p rotated by, by theta will move to a coordinate p theta superscript theta x superscript theta y superscript theta and z superscript theta. This equation in general could be written as p superscript theta of x superscript theta comma y superscript theta comma z superscript theta is equal to r k of theta times p x y z. Now we do not know how to do a rotation around an arbitrary axis K. K, but so we can we find out the the uh, transformation matrix using this orthonormal basis transformation? There, of course, I have got my two two of my basis vectors are are having the same origin, so I don't need to translate them. This could be a homework to you all. Now let us do a series of transformations but before we do the transformation let us see the vector k and its, its contribution to each of these axes. That is the, the projection of k on y axis is ky, the projection of k on x axis is xk and the projection on the z axis is kz. The values of kx, ky, kz in this format where ky is equal to k cos beta, x is equal to k sin beta cos alpha, z, kz is equal to k sin beta sin alpha.